Night gathers, and now our podcast begins. It shall not end until we're done talking. We are the princes that were promised. Welcome to the princes that were promised. It's me, it's Shawnee Wan, and joining me, as always, it's John. John, has it been worth the wait? Did it meet your expectations? Are you satisfied? Lay it on me, brother. Uh, I was definitely satisfied with it. It wasn't perfect. It was not a perfect episode. No, that it was not. Maybe there was definitely some points that I think maybe expectations were slightly a bit too much on. Can you elaborate that? Well, I, I think right, 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 right away, I'll just go right into it. I thus thought the John Ari reunion was not as good as I thought it should have been. And it's safe to say that's what you have, well... That's one of the things you were most looking and forward to. I still to. enjoyed. I still, you know, I did my fist pump when it happened. I, I still, like, yes, 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 finally, yes. But I just thought it was missing some things. Uh, I thought there should have been some music when they hugged. Okay. I thought there, you know, like that goodbye brother theme should have been, should have been played or some sort of a Winterfell theme mm-hmm. should have been playing there. I thought that could have brought up the the emotion of the uh, of the uh, reunion. And then another thing I didn't like about it was, you know, it's this Arya loving Sansa that I'm going to get a little bit on John's case. Like, you know, Sansa is the smartest person. You better watch yourself and go for the freaking family, John. Like, we all think John's not part of the family here anymore. Like, you know, because we, we, that, we're not realizing what John is doing. And that's what's so upsetting. Like, knowing and see through the, you know, can see the forest through the trees, wherever that term is. Okay, well, let's start with that then. Let's start with Arya. You're just upset that she is pro Sansa, pro Sansa, completely pro Sansa. Well, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a John versus Sansa thing yet, or at least at that. No, point, it's getting it there right now. It's getting I agree there. With you. I, think I it don't will believe get there, but. Sansa goes around saying, and she's rightly, and she's right that you can't leave Cersei. I don't believe her at all. She does not respect John, but don't worry. In the end, they will. I have no doubt about that. And the Sansa John split. That really started. I mean, that goes back to season six, honestly, right? A little bit there at the end, yeah. She thought that she should have got some more recognition for the uh, the, uh, the bastards. Mm-hmm. And then she got a little bit while John was away. Yeah, she's so power hungry. It's ridiculous. She is so power hungry. Ridiculous. I, I'll, dude, I will, I will fight, argue with anyone to the death over her. Bring it on, Sansa fans. I, I'm death. here all day, all day. <laughs> um. All right, so then from Arya's point of view, what do you think's going on? Like, there's no way that she doesn't trust John, right? That's what I'm hoping this doesn't turn into. I don't think so. Like, there's like what there's one thing to say, like we've we've made amends for the first time in our lives, and she is right. But don't tell me now that Arya is gonna Arya is gonna start to like distrust John because with, with Danny and all. I don't think so. At least I didn't take that from that conversation. I just took it as well. She she said that you know John John said to her that you know I'm family too, and then Arya says, "Well, th- don't you forget it." Me me going back in her line that she's here to support House Stark. Like you know, don't you forget to support House Stark? Like they all think that John's not support House Stark. John, dude, it, it's gonna be no, I- it's so nerve wracking that I have to like, watch this episode mm-hmm. and just get these feelings that John is going to do you know like turn his back on House Stark. No, he, he he would never. He'll never he's gonna, no. he's never gonna do that. Everything he's doing right now is to help House Stark. Going back to Arya real quick, I I didn't take it that way. I just took it as look. Yes, Arya, I took it. I took it that way. Well, look. All right. So just bear with me for a second. The mm-hmm. opening scene, right with the procession, Arya was watching them. And nobody mm-hmm. saw her, but she was watching them, and she saw John, and she saw Daenerys, right? And I think she's always been very observant, more so now, especially with her training at the House of Black and White. To be an assassin, to be a faceless man, she, you know, she's she has to be observant. So, is it possible that she saw John Daenerys riding next to each other? You know, that wasn't like John following his queen. That was like they were riding together into Winterfell, and she may have put two and two together. And I think when she said, "Don't you forget it," I, I took it more as her 
realizing that John and Danny may be a thing. And she's not joking with him, but like, don't you forget it. You know, I know you're a part of the family also. And I don't think that she said anything that would make John think that he wasn't a Stark. I think she's also had a time of it and she's more serious as an adult than she was as a child, like all the things that she's been through. So when John's saying, oh, you, what was the line that he said as far as Arya supporting Sansa? Um, oh, you're, oh, you're see, he's like, uh, and I just watched it too on YouTube real quick. Uh, like, uh, oh, so you're agreeing with Sansa now, huh? Or he, you know, stuff like, cause him like, dude, like, Arya, you never agree with Sansa. Like, he, yeah, but he, 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 he was kind of joking like, around too, though. Yeah, he was like, I could have used you, I could have used your help mm-hmm. with Sansa, you know, I mean, he thought that he would be able to have, you know, if Ari was there, be like all times where they can, he can help gang up on Sansa, but now he's realizing now she is the smartest, you know, John says, she, you know, what John, John said, you know, she thinks she's so smart, Then Arya says, she's the smartest person I know. I get why you're taking it that way, although I do see a division between John and Sansa that will divide further, I think for now it's nothing but love for the Starks. I think I, I think they're all still on the same page. Um, and as far as Arya, even when she finds out, if she finds out, I'm assuming she will also find out that John is Aegon Targaryen. I think even then, I got a feeling that Sam's gonna get fed up next week and he's gonna say something. And we'll get on when we talk about Sam and Daenerys. All right. So I'm gonna hold that thought. Okay. So how about the opening credits? I like the change. I'm a little curious why they wait. You know, seven seasons and we're gonna change it up now. Me too. And that's actually the missed opportunities. Mm-hmm. of the opening credits. Like, it's always been cool to see a new castle or see a new area. Right. That's always been exciting, but they did more than that with the opening credits here. Well, I think they showed the two important things that are two very important elements for this season. Let's go. Let's break it down. I just watched it again. First off, obviously, the Crooks of Winterfell they showed. Well, all right. So, they, they start with the toppled wall, right? Yeah. And then they go to the last hearth, which was pretty cool. I was like, oh, we're going to see the last hearth. We went on end up seeing too much of it. But then we get to Winterfell. Have we had that heart tree before? Well, if you always see the heart tree, you know, grow bigger than when they were, you know. I feel like it lingered longer or, or had a different view of it. But yeah, it was the interior, the crypts of Winterfell. I mm-hmm. think that's going to be huge. Yeah. I also noticed, starting with the toppled wall, how the ground was changing. The tile pieces were kind of flipping up and yeah, it kind of gave me the thought that- Ice blocks. Ice blocks. And it also made me think that this view of the map that we have every episode- what if it was from the point of view of the White Walkers? I mean, yeah, it's the places that we're going to see in that episode, but just the way that it happened this week, it made me think it's like the White Walkers looking at the map, you know, reminded me of when Rob was fighting the War of the Five Kings and they had the map and, you know. Well, it started by going from north to south instead of going from south to north. hmm Yeah. So, I mean, it just had that thought. I doubt it's relevant or anything, but it just gave me that thought. Did you notice anything about the Crips in particular? I didn't catch anything in particular. Like, did, did you see anything? Not in the crypts, but the next the next part right after the crypts. Okay, go. That band, I guess is the best word I can I can. Oh, you're talking about on the um, yeah the, the speeder or something. Yeah, whatever the hell it is. Uh, but right after the crypts, we had it was a lion with a fish in its mouth, a dire wolf hung with arrows in it. Really, I, I didn't catch that. I, oh, I think dude, I did see people talk about I it. I only caught it now on on the third time watching it. But the third image, I'm not quite sure what it is. I don't know if you can if you can bring it up on your computer or whatever, but it's the line. It's got the Tully fish in its mouth. It's the direwolf hung arrows in it, and then I don't know. It's either something to do with the faceless men. Maybe it's the Titan of Bravos. I'm not sure, but the head it kind of resembles the masks that the um shoot. What were they called in uh, Marine? Sons of the Harpy. Yeah, Sons of the Harpy. It kind of looks like that, but. Could also maybe be a direwolf head. I'm not sure. Hold on one second. Let me um. Hold on. I'll, I'll put on my hold on my DVR. Hold on one second. Don't want to forget about that. There was another another huge thing I thought also in the um. It's 55 seconds into the intro. The constant wall. They're going through the wall. Yeah, they've showed they've they've showed the heart tree, but definitely uh, not from that type of a, of a look, a different look. Yeah, I feel like it was a different angle, or it lingered a little bit longer than usual. Mm-hmm. Go down into the crypts. You see Liana's crypt, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, so the first band that I see, I see on the left. Is this what you're talking about? Yeah, it's a lion. With lion the- with, with the fish. Mm-hmm. And the second, the middle one there. Pretty sure it's a direwolf. 
Yeah, that that's a dark because I know they were talking about that on the, uh, Twitter. Right, and it looks like and he's the red wedding. Right, because those are the twins. But then to the right, I thought it'd be kind of stupid putting two darwels together like that. Yeah. Ah, uh, but it, it almost the. Do I want to say that? Oh, God. What makes me think it's something with Essos is War of the Five Kings, Red Wedding, but then what's going on with Daenerys at the same time, which is why I thought maybe it was the Sons of the Harpy. Can't tell who the guy is. I, yeah. I don't think it's a It's not a White Walker, right? No, I don't think so. But that mask does look like the Sons of the Harpy. Or this, and the person wearing the mask is just some person, you know, nobody in particular. And he's got the dagger. So that, that's what makes me think Sons of the Harpy. That's possible then. I mean, I, I, I can't really, it's really tough to make out. And it, it looks, uh, I don't know, it almost looks like there's dead fish underneath him or right to the right of him. But the second one might be more interesting. All right, so from, from here, we go. It goes to King's Landing. And what's important about King's Landing, it goes underneath. We three see like the dragon heads and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, we, was, right. I think it also goes through the, the Tower of the Hand, right? Yeah. What I thought was really funny with seeing that funny, but interesting, was that they showed the bottom there uh, of King's Landing. You know, the where maybe where the black cells are and the the, the area where Arya was in season one, kind of, and the, the place where like we saw a lot of it in season seven with the dragon heads. Right. Uh, does that mean that there's going to be something very important? With the undergrounds of King's Landing in this season, also now, which I think very well could be, is possible. But it's also there's the um, ah, shit. What is the name of the weapon? The ballistic. Uh, the one that she wants to use to kill the dragons. The one, yeah, yeah. That's there. You see the weapon, and then it's aimed at the three dragon. Looks like yes, yeah, three dragon heads. Which is interesting. Are you talking? That's on. It's on the band. No, not yet. But that's the three dragons also. But if you look at that band, right? Because all right, so then we go, yeah, the throne room, the Iron Throne, which I didn't really see anything. No, you didn't see the the, the, the Lion of Lannister on the top there, and then the band you see a dragon that would appear to be a dragon. It is a dragon, and there's three little dragons. But what's most interesting is if you look to, like, you see how like it's a big dragon, the three little dragons in front of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Then in front of the dragon at the top. Okay. Well, it's a shooting star. Is it the comet? Dawn? Lightbringer? Are you talking to the, the left you're talking about? Yeah, the leftmost icon that's on that band. Could this be just a flame of fire? It could be. It's possible. But I feel like... I'll see, you know what I always say? If it's, on, if it's in the shot, it means something. Mm -hmm. you know, especially with a show like this. And why are there four dragons? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't. It's got to be something, though. I don't. I look at that and I think, I think of uh, like the sigil of House Dane, honestly. But they had to t they even touch my House Dane outside of Arthur Dane, really. Yeah, I wouldn't think that we'd have anything to do with House Dane, but that's what that's what that thing makes me think. Either that or the comet, but that didn't play too much of a role in the TV show. But point being of all of it is it's pretty cool, and I wish they had been doing it the whole time. You know, you know these little extra little Easter egg type things. Well, you got anything else on the opening credits? No, that was I. I just thought the crypts and the underneath the King's Land. I think that's going to play important roles in this season. Agreed, totally agree. All right, man. Well, so what did you think of the procession with John and Daenerys? Did you like how it mirrored? Well, definitely, they, they played the same music, which I thought mm -hmm. was a little strange, because you always thought you would, I guess, that music just through to this now have always wanted for uh, kings and queens to come up down the King's Road. To get to the King's Road theme, I guess you can say, because I always always saw that as a Baratheon or Lasher type theme. Yeah, I always took it as like the Baratheon of King's Landing, mm -hmm. you know, the Robert Baratheon theme, mm -hmm. um, you know, with Stannis having his own theme, but I guess it is more of a royal procession, King of the Seven Kingdoms theme, or it could just be they wanted to be a little bit on the nose with the music, you know, to match up with Winter is Coming. And what was the deal with no episode title until after the episode aired? 
What is the title? I, I, I don't even... Oh, it's called Winterfell. Oh, really? Because it wasn't on the thing nope. at all. Nope. I don't know why they did that. Like, I get it beforehand, right? To try and prevent spoilers or leaks or whatever. But you would think, like, you know, when you go to choose the episode, if you're streaming it or whatever, it would say, you know, Winterfell. Mm-hmm. But, but I think it's a good name for the episode, Winterfell. All right, dude. Bran Stark. Hands down. The best episode with Bran Stark since the pilot episode. Hold the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not even – like, hold the door. That may be a better episode. I, I'd have to think about it. But just the things that Bran does. He was so awesome in this episode. Like, we start with, you know, John being real happy to see him. And he's like, hey. Oh, you've, you've grown. You're, oh, you're a man. Almost. <laughs> Almost. Um, when Danny shows up <laughs> and he's like, I don't, I don't even think John gets to, to say, oh, and this is my brother, Bran. Mm-hmm. She just <laughs> she just kind of turns to him and he's like, we don't have time for this. Daddy's like, John, who the fuck is this guy? He's creeping yeah, the, me out. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, your dragon was killed and the, now the Night King has him. <laughs> right. We're all going to die. They're on their way. She's like, but they're like oh, they, okay. And that thing has no reaction to that. Like, oh my God, like there's no reaction to that. Well, maybe she thought he was like, you know, like developmentally disabled or something. I don't know. Like she's, she's like, what? John, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> uh, it's just my brother, Brand. But that wasn't even the best. Like that was awesome. But the best part about Brand in this episode was the emotional low points that people hit, that they, <laughs> they turn around and there's, and there. and there's Bran looking at him. <laughs> Dude, every time, every single time I was cracking up, like I couldn't. <laughs> Samuel's just been like was- horrified of the, the news of Danny. He's coming out there crying. And like all of a sudden, there he is. There's Brad. How come you, you don't want, you should say you're, you're his brother. I can't. I'm waiting for an old friend. Uh, but first, it was Tyrion. After he speaks with Sansa, then he looks down and he sees Bran. <laughs> well, that's what we're talking. About. Well, yeah, I'm not sure we were talking about before when it was up here. But I'm kind of hoping that it's Bran going in the database and, and finding out that Tyrion is lying and Tyrion is part of this betrayal. I don't think that that's something Bran would keep to himself, though. But we'll yeah, we'll get we'll let's table that for now when we talk about Tyrion, but Tyrion sees him and then Sam sees him. And then when Jamie shows up at the end, the final shot of the episode. That was great, by the way. It was so awesome. Yeah, he's like, oh. That's the, and that's when I realized, oh, that's the old friend. Like, oh my God, it's Jamie Lannister. Yeah. At first, I really thought the seat, the, the episode was going to end with uh, Ned Umber and the, uh, the limbs that mm-hmm. they made into that symbol again that we constantly keep on seeing. I thought that's how the episode was going to end. and But then they just did a cut to, like, Wintertown again. Mm-hmm. And they're following this guy with, you know, with the hooded, you know, with the hood on. And I'm like, you know what? You, do you want me to, do you want to laugh? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of Jamie Lannister at all for some really? reason. You know who I was thinking it was? And obviously this would have been like, really, John? You really, you know, if I say it right now, it's going to look really stupid. Alan Reed? Nope. Who? Benjamin Stark. <laughs> I was seriously thinking, did he get away somehow? Like, did he use some like magic to get to protect him? Dude, that would have been. I that really, really thought. Awesome. I really thought it was Benjamin Stark for a while because I'm thinking, like, who who else wore, wore a hood? You know, Uncle Benjamin. <laughs> And then all of a sudden you see the face and it's Jamie Lash. You're like, oh my God, this is, he's like so older now. Like Jamie he looks like so like he's in the beard again, going again. He, it's gray. No blonde in this hair, really. Yeah. You- <laughs> and there's Brad. Always waiting, always watching. Yeah. And, and Jamie sees him. He's like, oh crap. I mean, this is like the last person. I, I <laughs> The one person I didn't want to see first, I'm seeing first. <laughs> <laughs> It's not even like he could hide or like, you know, Brand's yeah. Brand right there. He knew he was coming. Yeah, he's, he's probably trying to see maybe if he can see Tyrion first or something. Get it, you know. A friendly face, yeah. 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 Someone even like a Davos, maybe. A Brienne, perhaps. But there he is. It's Bran. You're like, oh my God. 
This is so awkward. <laughs> I didn't picture, I guess I should have, but I didn't picture an icy reception for Jamie, nor did I picture him. Not that he snuck in, but the way he entered Winterfell, I get it. You know, with the hood on, he's Jamie Lannister. He's not welcome in the North. Mm-hmm. But I guess I somehow pictured whatever would be going on at Winterfell, it would be mostly about preparing for an attack from the others. So I thought when Jamie arrived, it'd be like, Jamie, you're here. Where's, where's the Lannister army? It doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. I don't want to get too deep into what's happening in episode two, but it looks like he's almost on trial, you know? Mm-hmm. I have a quick prediction. You know who's going to get him out of that trial? Who? You know, you know who's going to get him on, 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 will be on his side. John. That, that, that will change public opinion. Brand Stark. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's going to be Brand. Brand's going to say, hold on. This guy did save hundreds of thousands of people. The Mad King was going to kill all these people, but oh. this guy saved them. Wow, you think that Bran's going to... Wow. hmm Interesting. A lot of interesting stuff. A lot of interesting stuff. So I, a lot of stuff is happening in this episode. I just don't think people really, you know... It's like, oh, there wasn't a battle, so not a lot of stuff happened. Right. I think a lot of stuff did happen in this episode. Listen, it wasn't... I think uh, the season seven premiere, I think, was a better episode. But at the same time, a lot more is going on in this episode. And it didn't feel like it was an episode void of much action. All right, so let's do Sansa. Sansa and her uh, passive-aggressive mm-hmm. welcoming of Daenerys to Winterfell. Mm-hmm. Daenerys may be queen, but it seems like Sansa's in charge at Winterfell. What do you think? Well, they definitely all seem to have Sansa's opinion on everything. You know, like it's... Winterfell has been... Has been dare I say... Sansified, yeah, uh, of the thinking. The Glover's leaving, not following John. John is. We should question John's uh, loyalties. That is all Sansa Stark right there. Excuse me, Sansa Tully. Are you implying that Sansa kind of let the Glovers walk away? Because I was going to say she should have been able to convince them to stay. Right, but she didn't. Well, along those lines, what does Sansa really know about? The White Walkers, about the threat beyond the wall. Well, she's never seen it before. That's the big thing, right? She just knows so, what John's told her. Yeah. So okay, we'll make you know, per, you know, per provisions and making sure we're getting you know food and all that, and you know, right away she's got to say, well, you brought in an army I can't feed and some dragons I can't feed. She's just it's it's all like passive aggressive. Mm-hmm. Like if he didn't bring an army in, you know, she'd be like. You know, well, where, where's this army you're going to help us with? Very Cersei-like. Yes. Like, if Cersei was in that scene, that's the line she would say. Mm-hmm. And then even dealing with Tyrion, she was Cersei-like, the way mm-hmm. she treated him. I thought their reunion would be a lot warmer, but she's grown very cold, Sansa. She was always pretty well, cold. but Yeah, well, I I will give her credit for at least knowing, because she's – since she's acting like Cersei, she knows how Cersei acts. She's probably, you know, I'll give her credit that she's called Tyrion out. I think it's very important now when she does call Tyrion out, she's doing one or two things now. Either A, she's questioning Tyrion on, well, if you believe Cersei, then you're an idiot. Or two, she's letting Tyrion know on the outset that she's on to him, that she doesn't believe him now. You know what I'm saying? It's one or two things. Mm-hmm. She, Sansa is either blowing Tyrion up that how he's stupid to to fall for what Cersei says, or two, Sansa's blowing him up. No, basically, again, passive aggressive, telling him but not telling him. I know you're a part of a betrayal here. Because then it flips. Then after that, it shows Bran looking at Tyrion. And that's really setting that up. I think it's number two. I think Sansa knows that Tyrion's not being honest here. I don't know if I'd go that far, but she definitely is like suspicious of him as far as like you know Cersei as well as I know Cersei, if not better. Like that's not something that she would ever do is send right. her army north. But at the same time, Sansa hasn't seen what's coming. She hasn't seen the White Walkers. So I think it's a lot easier for her to be looking at all this as the Game of Thrones, as politicking, as 
jockeying for position. Where is everybody that's seen what's beyond the wall? Well, it's right what Danny said to John in season seven. You have to see it to believe it. You have to actually see it. Right. And I think that I mentioned it before, and I'll mention it again, and I'm sure by the end of this this review, I'm going to mention it again. In the end, Sansa will realize. In the end, she'll realize that John was correct in all this. Unless she's dead. Oh, God, I pray, please. Speaking of which, still alive, still doing his thing, Lord Beric Dondarrion. What did you take as far as the situation of the Night's Watch? Because I took the wall breach. I thought that happened at East Watch. So, what's going on at Castle Black then if Ed Tollett has traveled south to the last hearth? Probably just trying to run away. You know, who knows what else is going to happen? They got one side down. Maybe there's no ravens. Maybe he thought I have to go down south and warn them. Maybe there wasn't any ravens left. At uh, mm. he's got blue eyes. Yeah. I've always had blue eyes. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Dolores said he's probably gonna die next episode. Yeah, I thought he'd die this episode. A lot yeah, of on probably. There. I could see him like dying, like as they're trying to like flank. The, uh, the 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 uh, the other's army, and like I can see like a group going off trying to get them. I can see like Tormund living and Barrack living, and maybe a couple other like scrubs. But, like Dolores said, being one of the people that actually gets caught and killed. I get these. I, yeah, poor Dolores said. But I feel like if they actually see the Night King's army. I don't think they're going to try and attack it. Like, they don't have the numbers. No, I'm just saying they're going to try to flank it, like, go around them to the left. Oh, okay. Like, you know, try to go down, sure. like, right. Right. you know, try to go down a different path, like, you know, kind of, like, circle around them on a faster trajectory and faster route. All right, let's talk about little Lord Ned Umber and his horrible fate. I was not expecting that. I, listen, as soon, no. as, as soon as John sent him back to the last hearth to get his people, I knew he was done for. But I did not expect that. What do you think that symbol means? I know there's been some theories on that, but I never really... What does that symbol mean? Well, it matches the symbol in the prologue of episode one, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yep. It matches the symbol we saw in Bran's vision. It matches... Okay, can you go back to that for a second? Because I don't remember Bran's vision. Which season six or season seven, he had a vision, and when that vision there was a circular thing, it was kind of like where like Blood Raven's lair was. There was that, there was that same circular. Okay, I can't think what the episode it was. I'm sorry, no, but, that's right. but it also matches season three, episode 10, when all this, you know, they, they start calling Danny Misha Misha mm-hmm. when they raise her up. It's in a circular, you know, pattern. Same thing, Battle of the Bastards, where John comes up through and it doesn't start, you know, to, to, you know, he's almost suffocating. And when he finally is able to break up, it's in a circular, you know, pattern. The only thing I can think is, no, nah, it's stupid. Like, it's their sigil. Is it? But I, is it? A, well, yeah, that's why I, I was just going to say that. Is there a sigil? Is it there? It's got to be something to do with, like, their, I don't want to say, this is going to sound even dumber, their calling card. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like, like their business card. <laughs> you know, but this is like, and I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is like their, you know, prepare to die card, you know. If the zombies and the dead people didn't tell us, this tells us, this is the work of the White Walkers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Interesting, though. Again, another callback to Winter is Coming. Um, mm-hmm. I thought for sure we'd see the Night King or the White Walkers. Do you think we'll see them before Episode 3? You might just see, like, how the, the trailer for the preview for next week ended or how the trail ended. Oh, you know you know, next, week, next week's ending on, like, the cliffhanger of all cliffhangers. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. 
Who plays Samuel Tarley? John Randall. Awesome acting this week, no? Mm-hmm. He was awesome. I didn't even think of the Randall Tarley factor in their meeting. But you know what it is? I think we've been thinking so much about reunions. It's harder to think about first-time meetings and how interesting those are. Mm-hmm. And in a way, the first-time meetings were more interesting than the reunions. Yeah, definitely. Since it's kind of maybe going a little bit on the Danny Samuel thing, I wanted to bring up something. Where was Jorah Mormont when they had their big meeting and the um, and their Winterfell uh, feast room, wherever you want to come, where they always do their uh, Leanna Mormont bashing John, you know, sonsified. I'm going to quote that movie, I'm going to quote that term now, sonsified. <laughs> sonsified. You know, she's attacking John. Where was Jorah Mormont standing up, you know, because she's attacking, you know, they're attacking John for standing behind Daenerys. Where was Jorah Mormont trying to be like, whoa, 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 hold on one second? I don't know. I mean, that was just weird and just real quick. I know we're kind of like jumping around here a little bit. That's right. But I just want to make sure, you know, because I'm just getting, I'm just remembering these thoughts. Where was Brienne this episode? We didn't see her at all? I, no. Oh, man, I hope that, I I hope that doesn't mean she was filming. Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> oh, God, please. <laughs> Next question, please. Where are we again? We're talking about reunions and first meetings. Um, she was there. What, what was the last we saw of her in season seven? She was acting as length. She would have came back. I think we saw her in the procession, I think. But that I was I have it. to watch it again. I have to watch it again. I mean, it's – ultimately, I don't think there's anything to Jorah not being there, but – it, you know, maybe it's just. Oh no, I don't. I don't think so either. I don't think there's any like foreshadowing. Well, honestly, or maybe it's maybe hospital. Maybe it's good writing in that if he was there, you know, he would speak up for John, and that's not what the writers um, who wrote this one, Dave, Dave Hill. Yeah, you know, this one of the best John episode. That's all this was. So let's talk about Danny and Sam. No, I mean, is that where we, we were up? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that was a big part of this episode, I thought. Yeah, that was that was key. I, that was key. And I'm not sure what podcast it was. Table this comment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to table this off for, until we get to a little bit later on on this topic. I don't want to start it off right now. I, I feel it's kind of a uh, climax you know, of, a, of a conversation more than the tell in the beginning. So let's just go with our initial thoughts on this, Danny and Samwell. Like my initial takeaway, not trying to think too deep into it. Amazing acting by John Bradley. Oh, I said John Randall, right? It's John Bradley. I'm sorry. Who's John? John Randall is a football player. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought you said John Bradley. But his name is actually John Bradley. Yeah. <laughs> I said John Randall. John Randall is a, uh, all to, uh, an all-pro Hall of Famer defensive tackle for the Minnesota Vikings. And I think made the Washington Redskins for a short time. But he's not in Game of Thrones. He's not, not, <laughs> not that we know of. Um, yeah, I, that reaction surprised me, though. Right? You wouldn't think he'd be that upset. And maybe he wasn't. That, well, he's not really upset about his father. I think it's you know, if you, if you, it's for his brother, yeah. because with his father, it's kind of like yeah, he said his father died, but you know, it's tempered by his, his treatment that his father, you know, laid on to him. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, you know, the real tear jerker part of it was, well, that's good. I can go back home now. My brother is Lord. He'll let me come back home. And she's like, oh, yeah, oh yeah. By the way, way, yeah, yeah, he. And then Sam just can't take it. And Sam's not the type of person, especially after giving out all the pleasantries, you know, your grace, you know, that to, it, he's not the type of guy that's going to like spew out venom towards the Daenerys right there. No. He's in a hole, yeah. he's in a hole that sadness inside. He, you know, he says, can I, you know, can I please, st- you know, step aside? And I feel like, I think Daenerys is like, oh crap, all, oh, you know, this is. Did you take that out of Daenerys? Yeah, yeah. I did. I did. I, I, you know, because she's so she's praising Sam for saving Jorah Mormont, and then you know she's like, give her kudos for at least being honest. It didn't beat around the bush. Right. You have to say at least you gotta give her at least for you know being honest, direct, just laid it out. Yeah, yeah. She definitely saw that. That really broke him up, and I think she realized like, oh, yeah, that was yeah. Some things you wish you could have back. Yeah. Right after that, Sam sees Bran, and then it's the John and Sam reunion. Mm-hmm. All right, before we get to that, I, before, I, that's more of a cap or two. I want—I think we should talk about what did you think of the 
Dragonflight. Dragonflight. Hated it. Hated it. It's like they're dire wolfing the dragons. I thought it had a lot of potential, and I just thought it was way. It was not taken serious enough. This should have been a serious moment, I think. Well, this should have been something where you see Daenerys. Daenerys should have like really have encouraged it. John should have tried done it on his own instinct, and you should have had and you should have had Daenerys be like, "I'm not sure if you should do that." Blah 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 blah, right. and then all of a sudden he starts riding him. Right. Then it should be like you have to put the camera on Daenerys, be like trying to make you think, "What's up with this guy? He's able to drive." You know. Why is he able to drive, ride a dragon? See, I pictured it as it's a situation where either Daenerys is in trouble, Daenerys is not there, and John has to ride the dragon in order to save somebody. Or It's a situation where he has to get on the dragon, and he does. I never, ever in a million years would have thought it'd be like a romantic sort of, oh, ha, 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 well, I guess you got to ride the dragon, or, you know, if you don't, it was nice knowing you. Like she's she's like, I don't think your sister likes me. Oh, I told you about Northerners, you know, that they don't really accept outsiders. Well, how about let's ride dragons, you know, because you've never done that before. And it's a very strong possibility you fall off and die. And I'm sure the Northerners will, you know, accept me more if you fall off one of my dragons and die. Or if my dragon eats you. Which is usually what happens to first-time dragon riders, is they get eaten. So I hated it. I don't think it was well thought out. I don't think it was true to what the dragons are or to how difficult it is to ride a dragon. You know, that moment when da- when Danny first rides a dragon, how powerful of a moment was that? Mm-hmm. And now they're just making light of it. I think that would be my biggest criticism of the episode is, is the dragon riding. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that I think this is an element I want to make sure that I know people are still going to complain about the pacing. Mm-hmm. It- it's obvious this is six episodes. Last season, seven episodes. The pacing is going to be very quick. Mm-hmm. It, it, maybe it shouldn't be, but it, it it is what it is. What I liked about this episode, I didn't like the execution of the of the dragon riding. Mm-hmm. As I said before, I think it should have been more serious. I think there should have been like, oh my god, he's able to ride a dragon. Why? How can he be doing this? Right. But I did like how... We didn't beat around the bush with it. He still just does it. I liked how it's over and done with. You mean right? He rides a dragon. I liked how Theon saved Yara. There was no bullshit, no nonsense. Boom, save. Okay. See, that was that was I, my other I, thing. Is I, I guess it's not that I didn't like it, but it just went down differently, a lot differently than I thought it would. Yes, I just liked the whole. I they didn't mess around. Like there was no like teases. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't a tease. There, what, okay. Remember when? Remember when Yara went to try to save Theon, and they had that horrible cut, and then my brother's lost. And it was kind of like a tease, right? There wasn't anything like that. It was straight. It was just straight to the punch. And I actually, I, I know the pacing is fast. It's probably too fast, but I like that about this episode. There was no teasing around. It was just boom on the dragon. Now again, the execution of it was a lot, a lot to be desired. Okay, I think that's a good summary of it, dude. See, like they had so much time to to get these episodes written. I feel like it could have used one more rewrite. You know, it, it could have been. Or do you? Up. Or do you think it could have been? You or do you think it could have been an hour and ten minute long episode? They could have added fifteen minutes to it. Yeah, that would have done it also. So that's a lot of that's a lot of gripes that you know I've seen that you know if they just you know expanded like twenty seconds there or thirty seconds there on the on, on one little scene. Yeah. And I don't understand why these first three episodes are, are an hour each. I don't get that. No, no, no. Episode three is an hour and 20 minutes. Next episode is only 58 minutes. Then it goes to an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. The next episode is probably going to be the weakest, or not the weakest, but the least satisfying will be episode two. All right. So Theon's going to go back to Winterfell. Mm hmm. And Yara's going to go to the Iron Islands. Mm hmm. So is that the last we see of Yara? I'm going to say no. I'm re- you're still going to see her, I think. I think you can still see her. Maybe she won't be in the episode three battle. Maybe you'll see her in episode five battle. Okay. But that's not the let you see a Yara. I think she's too... Sh- I think 
even how the show is going to point her out. She's just too strong of a woman that's just going to stand by aimlessly while, you know, Theon dies and, you know, I say, well, the good guys die, but, you know, the realm perish. I think she'll, I think she'll lead some sort of an assault. All right. I think I see where you're going with that. You want to talk about Bronn real quick? I don't think he, I don't see him. No, I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. This is going to be something, and maybe something that Sansa has not learned, but there are things that have blown up on Cersei's face, and this is going to be another one. She's not been flawlessly perfect, uh, Cersei. And, 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 you know, no, no, not at all. She's found ways to get in the upper hand, definitely, but her executions are not flawed. This is going to be another fail. That this, I, I just. But I'm, I'm wondering what the payoff is going to be with this. Isn't it funny though? Can we just say this again? We've we've talked about this numerous times. I mean, it's still. It, I mean, you have this series of eight years. Okay, people making all kinds of money. Okay, in real life, Le- Lena Heaney making all. Notice how they had to have Quiburn right. go down. Right. You still, Lena Healy still can't film a scene with Braun. It still can't happen. You're going to have to at some point. You would think it has to happen, right? I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, Lena, like, how much money are you making off this? Getting, you know, what Braun's name is. Like, we're in real life. I forgot his name in real life. Like, Jerome dude, Flynn. Jerome Flynn, thank yeah. you. Yes, that's right. This, come on. You got to do one scene here. I, I, need, I need a scene. I need a scene. <laughs> I pretend he's somebody else. I believe this. Act. <laughs> but they're probably so afraid of Lady Heaty that they don't even, you know, bother. Let's talk about Cersei. First of all, she's drinking wine. She's drinking wine, so you think she's already lost the baby? Yeah. All right. Even if there was a baby. See, what I was thinking, if she's going so far as to have Bronn kill her brothers, maybe she was trying to, this, her scene with Euron, her allowing Euron into her bed. Try to make it seem that Euron is the father. No. Well, I didn't, no, I didn't, yeah, I didn't no. think of the she's drinking, drinking wine. She, although she's drinking wine. I'm going to disagree on that. Um, she's, drinking, she's drinking wine. And the last season, she said she doesn't care. She wants the world to know that it's Jamie's the father. And there is no Surgeon General of Westeros saying that wine is bad for, <laughs> bad for uh, pregnancy. I don't know. I guess the jury's out. But I had a thought. What if Cersei's not asking Bronn to do that? What if Quyburn's making a play just to get rid of her brothers? Hmm. <sighs> Might be one storyline too many. What are your thoughts on Euron right now? Think he's going to kill Cersei, dude. The younger brother. You think he's the only one that's going to kill her? Yep. Which is similar to that, that first leak that we had. Remember the first quote unquote leak? That part feels right to me. Well, we have like 10 leaks. You could put one leak from this one, one leak to that one, one leak to this one, and put it all to together and be like, I guessed yeah. it all right. No, I mean, it's definitely possible. I, I, I definitely think that, you know, the, the three people uh, who, are, who could, who are possibly can be the ones to kill Cersei will be uh, Euron, Jamie, or it'll be Arya as Jamie's face. Well, maybe Tyrion also. No, no. Nah. It may be something where Tyrion does betray John and Danny, but he betrays them by siding with Cersei in a way that he doesn't think will end with something that makes him a traitor. Does that does that make sense? He agrees to help Cersei in a way that he doesn't think will end as badly as it ends. So he's a traitor by proxy. And he realizes what Cersei's done, whatever it is, he kills her. Mm. And then he's, you know, he's still a traitor. I don't know if that makes any sense, but. No, it does. If, if you know. then, then it's like, yeah, he, he is a traitor. It, but it's, it, it'd be more along the lines of like Jorah betraying Danny. He made this decision before knowing Danny. And then when he realized he believed in her or was in love with her or whatever, he didn't do that anymore. You know, it's like a misinformation, misunderstanding making a deal with the wrong person type thing for Tyrion with Cersei. And he has to answer for it. But it's not something he does to be evil or to straight side with Cersei. All right, so let's do John and Sam parlay that into... I think we could talk about Danny and Tyrion. And I think we're going to have a little bit of mm-hmm. a debate with it. So I think 
I think John looked equally as happy to see Sam as he did to see Arya. And when Bran, when Bran yeah. told Sam, you have to tell him you're his friend, I guess I yeah. assumed they were going to tell him together. And when I saw John was in the crypts, I'm like, there's no way that Bran's getting out to the fucking crypts in his wheelchair. Like, it's not, it's not yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, he, and he said that he's waiting for an old friend, that, you know. And Sam's like, Sam told him, you know, you're his brother. And Brad's like, he trusts you more than anyone. I don't, I don't know if that's totally accurate, but he, he definitely does trust Sam. Um, mm-hmm. What did you think of Kit Harrington's acting with the reveal? Uh, even before the reveal, I, I, I like the setup. Yeah. Love the setup that Sam uses. Because Sam, you know, he's upset. John sees right away that what's wrong. You know, is it Gilly? I mean, Gilly had died. You know, he hasn't seen, you know. No, Gilly's fine. The baby's fine. And then Sam goes in, and this is where I wanted to remember it before I said I want the table something off Mm -hmm. or something. Remember a couple months ago, we were on a podcast, and I don't know who, where I saw it from, but whoever the the person said that both John and Danny are alike, and that if you're their enemy, they want to kill you. Yes, I do remember that. I totally disagree with that. Danny, definitely, yes. John has shown mercy before. A lot of times. To a fault. Just, and, right. And just as Sam brought it up, Sam brought it up to him, like, would you, would you have killed my, my, my family? And John's still trying to, like, well, you know, we need to end, you know, need to end this war. I, I'm, I'm sorry that you did it. Blah, 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 blah. You know, he can tell you he's feeling, he's feeling guilty. And he's trying to, like, say, well, I wasn't a king there. But you weren't. And, that was an awesome lead in. But you were. You always were. And then John's like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, I gave up the King of the North. I gave up the crown. And that's something this whole entire episode we've seen thrown in our faces this whole entire episode. Uh, is the fact, like, oh, John, you gave up the crown. Why did you do that? You know, now no one, you know, we're not going to fight for you. You know, you have no crown. Blah, okay. blah, you know, right. what do you want to call it. Right. Sam says the line, what a great line. I'm not talking about the king of the north. I'm talking about the king of the bloody seven kingdoms. Yeah. And then it just, that stop, and then like that, they, uh, Raman Dejwadi with the music coming in. Yeah. I love the music there. I cannot wait to get the soundtrack on that, on, on that music. John was awesome. He's just, yeah, he's just like, what are you talking about, Sam? Your mother was Lyanna Stark. And your father, your real father, was Rhaegar Targaryen. Now, when he said Rhaegar Targaryen, the music changed. Oh, I didn't notice that. Oh, you notice it. That when it says your real father is Rhaegar Targaryen, and you just see, like, John's face is just like... I don't know. I can't explain how his face was. What, what, what do you, how, how can you describe his face? It's almost like he was, he was shocked. He didn't know how to take it, but at the same time, there was, like, he knew all along kind of thing, like... Right, he knew he. I think exactly. I don't think he was as shocked as he think he would be. He would. He's right. like, oh my god, no, no, no way. Right. I think all along, I, you know, it's almost. I think they really set it up where I hope maybe this out is in the books that may it's like John feeling maybe like to know that his mother wasn't a whore eliminates the shock value because it's almost as if see, I told you my, you know, like, you know, she was a good person. You know, she was a noble woman. You know. Type of type of feeling. Well, I like that he and listen, you know, kudos to Dave Hill, and you know what? To a certain extent, shame on Benioff and Weiss, right? Because you think of all the ramifications, right? All of the difficulty that must go into writing that scene, the scene where John finds out how is he going to react? A million things are going to be going through his head, but what does he say? Right? Mm -hmm. What's the line? And the first thing he says is, he goes to Ned. My father right. was the most honorable man I've ever known. Right. And you mean to tell me he lied to me? Immediately goes to Ned. Right. And I, and I love the fact that right in front of Liana's crypt. And I love the way Sam brings John back off. Like he brings John back to a different level. Because John was starting to get upset. Right. And Sam brings it back. To the level of saying, well, hold on, your father is, you know, Ned Stark was the most wrong man. Right. Because. He promised. He promised to protect you because you would have been killed. Mm -hmm. You're the true king. You're the true heir to the Iron Throne. Aegon, the sixth of his name, protector of the realm and all that. 
And John is still kind of like not up, like, not confused, but it's like, well, oh, but Danny's our queen. And She's not. Sam, it started out, the whole entire conversation started with Sam asking John. I think this goes back to this whole entire thing why I disagree with this person. There is a big difference between John and Danny. Yes. Definitely thus far. And Sam brings it all the way back. He says, You gave up your crown to save your people. Would she do that? No. And that is why you deserve to be king. That is why you deserve it off of her, because you know when to sacrifice things for your people. Danny doesn't. Yes. Danny will, Danny will kill people to get to the crown. You will not do that. And I, I've seen it. You've let the wildlings through. You've not killed people. Yes. Dude, dude, real quick, just shame on Benioff and Weiss for not writing that scene and for making Dave Hill write that scene. They should have wrote that. Come on. But yeah, the contrast between John and Danny. Danny, when she was in Essos, all right, listen, let, let's let's just parlay this into, unless you got something else to say about that scene in particular. Um, I've just watched it 10,000 times. I really think in the books, he's going to be the seventh of his name and not the sixth. I, think, I think, I don't know why they just didn't call him the seventh of his name, but I, I guess for them, the seventh of it, the number seven just to me is not as, as as important, but in the books. Well, no, it's because- The number seven. No, it's because there's there's been five King Aegons and right. in the books, but, Fagon but, but will but be Aegon's sixth of his name. Right, the faking, the faking, right. right. But it's not like the show, the, the show people know that. They could easily have just said there's six Aegons already. That's true. They could have like- That's true. But I, yeah, the six, I, I just, I, hey, listen, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe John, a John will be, uh, will be the six of the books as well. But I just think the number seven is just too, too important. No, I think you will be- For George. I think you will be seventh in the books. And I guess maybe just the number seven is going the way of direwolves and dragons and the Kingsguard. This doesn't mean anything anymore in the show. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's do this. Present your case for Tyrion, his heel turn, his betrayal, based on this episode, Winterfell. Right away saying, my case, mm-hmm. simple one. Right away saying how Cersei's going to send the troops up north. Okay. Once he said that, I'm like, that's it. He's betrayed them. That possibilities of the ending of this series is definitely going to be true. Now, I just hope that this betrayal does not lead to the death. But how, how do you connect the two, though? Because, like, what, whatever his betrayal is, what does him lying for Cersei have to do with whatever it will be? Or what do you think it, it has to do with it? Like, how does it lead to that? Part of the betrayal is with, I, that Cersei needs Tyrion just to tell them, yeah, I'm coming up north. So they go into battle thinking Cersei will show up to help? Mm-hmm. Okay. But I, I don't think it's going to work out that way. No. Because of Jamie, because of Bran. I think they just have to know that. I mean, it's still going to be kind of a betrayal. It's, it's, it's still, you're going to, the alliance, if you will, is going to have to go against two armies at the same time. And it's not like one of those things where, you know, they can come up with a plan saying, well, you know, let's call the alliance army number one, Nightwalk, Nightwalk. The Knights King army number two. You're and thinking Skywalker. Cersei's- <laughs> and the Cersei army number three, it's not like you can say, well, let two and three go at it for a while. If you let two go at it with three for a while, they're just going to advance their numbers. Okay, so then refresh my memory. What- I know I'm going way out of, you know. No, no, way. no, no, no. What What is Cersei's plan with the Golden Company then? Her plan is just to whatever. This is how stupid she is. Like, she still doesn't get it. Whatever army is left, she'll take care of it with, with their army, which I don't think 20,000 people from the Golden Company is all that much. Well, I guess she's she's betting that there won't be that many of this alliance left after. Well, I think she's probably betting that hopefully the alliance somehow can beat the Night King, or she's just really stupid and doesn't realize that the Night King's army is just going to be tripled, quadru- quadrupled, if mm-hmm. they defeat the alliance. Mm-hmm. And whatever armor she has is not going to be enough. But I see her logic in, not that I agree with it, but I see her logic in thinking, if this alliance can't beat this army of zombies... Now, keep in mind, she hasn't seen the White Walkers. She's only seen one zombie. But if this alliance can't beat them, what difference will my army make? I guess I thought you were implying that she was going to attack from the south while the White Walkers were attacking from the north. But that's not going to be the case, right? No, that's happening. I think that's going to happen. Really? That's just stupid on her part. But I guess she thinks that, ah, I guess the Golden Company just gives her more confidence. My thing with Tyrion is, I do think it's super suspicious that he thinks... You know, all the stuff we've talked about already with the no end to the conversation with Cersei. He never bets against his family. The guilt he feels about Marcella. Mm-hmm. 
But in this episode, what Sansa says to him, I always thought you were the most clever Lannister. Dude, you know Cersei, she's not coming up here. And the fact that he believes her, that's suspicious for me. But I felt he was, I mean, it would be, it would be a reveal. So they're not going to make it look like he's lying when he says that her army is coming. But he didn't come, he like, he came across as sincere to me. But that's not really, you know, that's not proof one way or the other. But here's my thing. Daenerys is the villain. A lot of what we talked about tonight goes with that theory, I think. The feeling I get at the end of, of Winterfell, at the end of episode one, whatever happens with Jon, whatever happens with Daenerys, I don't think that they're going to be a married, loving couple by the time Tyrion has a chance to betray them. I think that we'll get a divide between Jon and Daenerys. I don't think that Daenerys <clears throat> learning the truth about Jon, I don't think that's going to sit well with her. And look, it's like you were saying before, Jon didn't want the crown. John does make sacrifices for the greater good. Daenerys does not. She talks about doing it, but she doesn't do it. She went around Essos, and granted, these were slaver cities, but she went around conquering them, and she set up some puppet government, and she went on to the next one. You know, the show and the books frame it as though she's making the smart decision by deciding to rule Marine because she needs to learn how to be a queen. It's framed as like a good thing, but is it? Is that a good thing? She's brought a path of death and destruction everywhere she's gone. And ultimately, she doesn't know anything about Westeros, right? She was born on Dragonstone, and then she went to wherever, with the orange trees outside or the lemon trees or whatever. Bravos. Bravos, and then Pentos, and she has no sense of home with Westeros. And the way Amelia Clark was playing Daenerys, I don't know if it's quite the way it was written, but, you know, your sister doesn't like me. It didn't look like it phased her at all. Like she didn't care whether Sansa liked her or not. It's almost like she was looking down. And then she said, well, she has to respect me. Right. There was an or else there also. She, well, she has to respect me, you know, or else. But they got interrupted. I know, I, I don't think she said or else, but it was implied. I felt. I think we're looking at John versus Daenerys at some point. So I don't know how Tyrion plays into that. What side Tyrion would choose. And if Tyrion is going to betray. I don't think there'll be a John and Daenerys for Tyrion to betray, is what I'm saying. Do you see John and Daenerys still being a, like, marrying? Well, if Daenerys is pregnant, we know that John does not want to father a bastard. Yes, that's true. But I feel like the speed with which they hit on every storyline, I feel like if she was, that would have been touched on here. Well, I mean, let's give it one more episode, I think. Yeah. Let's, give it a, let's give it to episode two. I still think that Danny will make the sacrifice. Maybe. John, John will stab her in the heart. With heart's pain, and that's Lightbringer. But what's the scenario? Why would he be stabbing her? Because in episode three, he's going to face the Night King with one claw, and the one claw is going to shatter. Oh, dude, that would suck. And so then Bran's got to figure it out. Bran's got to figure out. He's got to do something, Bran. He's got to do two things. He's got to figure out that you need it. And maybe Sam knows it, that you got to forge a sword, and then Bran is going to have to do something mentally to defeat the Night King while John's there in the physical physical battle. Well, Bran's at least being a lot more proactive now. <laughs> Bro, I just, with the Bran thing, it's just, it's opened a door to like a bold, great future for Bran memes. Like it really has. <laughs> I was just going to say it. You know, you just put There's him looking really, at any situation. Yeah. <laughs> just means that the Bran memes could have ended. They just have they've oh, only begun. It totally reinvents itself. <laughs> so I've, I've already started seeing them <laughs> um, Dude, there's a lot going on I feel like too much for five episodes That's why I think it's too much right now For a John versus Danny it, 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 That's too much mm. There's not enough time for that, for that to happen mm -hmm. And and uh, let's Before we forget, George R. R. Martin did have an interview And he basically Confirmed that this ending Is pretty much going to be the ending that he has there, there is not going to be a different ending. There's going to be a lot of differences with different characters not being used in the show that lead to this. Mm -hmm. But the ending is, for the most part, going to be the ending. The point A to point B is going to be different, but point B is going to be the same. Yeah. Uh, what else you got, man? What do you think about next week? I think I like your idea that Bran's going to tell everybody mm -hmm. the truth about the Mad King. I don't think Daenerys will take that well. No. No. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, dude. I'm leaning more towards Daenerys' heel turn than, than I am the Tyrion heel turn. But don't get me wrong. There's support for the Tyrion heel turn. I just, I'm feeling the Daenerys' heel turn more so. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they're both going to turn. 
Well, then you also have, we had, in the previous, you have Daenerys and Sansa going at it again. Yeah. The reunions are great, but the first time meetings. Oh, we didn't talk about Arya and, and Gendry and uh, the Hound. Oh, the Hound. Yeah. Oh, wow. I thought it was great. Perfect. Both of them. Yeah. Uh, I thought Gendry and Arya, you know, uh, it, it, in a way, it might have diffused a little of the Gendry Sansa oh, potential thank, marriage. Thank God. Because, like, right there again, I think Gendry was flirting with Arya. Mm-hmm. She wants him to make basically a, yeah. a spear. Is that what it was? I, I couldn't tell what it was. No, I think it, I don't. I don't know. It could have been. Yeah, I don't. I couldn't really tell what it was. I think it's putting the Valyrian dagger on the tip of a spear. Which, as much as I love Needle, she can't go fighting White Walkers with Needle. Or maybe she can. She beat Brienne of Tarth with Needle, right? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, see, a guarantee next week ends with the White Walkers lining up on Winterfell. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. That that scene with the, with the horse, mm-hmm. the dead horse. But I do think from episode three until the series is over, it's going to be pedal to the metal. I think it'll be a lot of breather next week. You know, maybe some revelations. Like we said, the Jamie Kingslayer revelation. But the action is going to start episode three, balls to the wall. And maybe we've already talked about the directors of each of each episode. Yes, we have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Nutter's got the first two, then Sapochnik, and then Nutter again. He's got three episodes. And then Sapochnik and then TNT. Mm-hmm. And Benioff and Weiss wrote three, four, five, and six. Next week's a Cogman episode. Uh, you got anything else, man? I, all I'm going to say at the, uh, to end this is I feel in this episode, I'm going to go back on it again. These All these characters who are running up against John because they feel that John is not for the Starks, not for the North. To me, they're almost like the RLJ deniers. In the end, they're all going to look stupid, like I've been saying. Well, where are we at on the Jon Snow death watch? The doomsday clock, so to speak, for Jon Snow. Where are you at? Where are you leaning? What do you mean? You're leaning after episode one. I'm still leaning right now. He's going to die. This is too good to be true. I feel like you're going to lean that way until he doesn't. <laughs> I just thought, you know, in this series, I think we pick characters almost like we pick sport teams. And you follow yeah. these cat. You you know this. It's like a rivalry. You know, oh, you're a Stannis fan. You're a Daenerys fan. You're a Sansa fan. You're a Jon Snow fan. It's like you pick those people more so than any other genre, uh, genre movie or any kind of movie. Like you know, Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. Oh, you like Gandalf? I, I like Aragorn. But in this, it feels like it's so like intense. Like oh, but Jon, oh, like, you got to go for those. It's like a real sports rivalry type. That's an awesome way to put it. I just never feel that with any other. I, you, you just see, when you talk to people, like, oh, who's your favorite character in Game of Thrones? There's something more to it than just, oh, it's my favorite character. It's like, you pick a side. Yeah. That's an awesome way to put it. That's why there's Vegas, a Vegas betting line. Yeah. Odds on who Brad's going to win it. Yeah. I don't know about that. All right. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it. You find us facebook.com slash The Promise Princess. Follow us on Twitter at Prince's Promised. Read the Westerosi Companion, The Prince's, ThatWerePromised.com. We're on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, Stitcher, Spotify. We're on SoundCloud, YouTube. Subscribe. Leave a five-star review. Thanks for listening. We'll speak with you next time and enjoy Season 8, Episode 2, whatever it's going to be titled. They don't know until until it's over. They're coming up with the titles after the episode airs. Oh man. All right.